What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna start building a city inside of SketchUp. Um, this may turn into a longer series depending on how much you like what I'm doing, but uh, for now we're gonna use the extension Placemaker in order to create our city. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one of the things I've always wanted to do and uh, I don't know how far I'm going to take this in actual videos but I've always wanted to take like a like a downtown city area and kind of model the whole thing and create kind of a, a little bit more of a detailed area and I wanted to walk through kind of an easy way to get started with that so in order to start this we're gonna start by using the extension placemaker and then we may come back in in a future video and use something like profile builder as well but for today we're gonna focus on placemaker and so Placemaker is the city building extension for SketchUp. And um, I will link to that in the notes down below. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually not going to use Placemaker to bring in our geographical data, um, only because we want to bring the terrain in. And as far as I know, there's no way to bring the terrain in using Placemaker's dialog, I don't think. But what we can do is we can add a location using the add location function inside of SketchUp. And so once we find that, um, once we click on the add location function, we're going to find the area that we want to bring in. And so this is Castle Rock, which is, which is a town right up the road from me. And so I'm just going to select a region. And in this case, I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to um, drag this box until I get kind of the area that I want to bring in. And then once I have what I want, I'm going to click on the button for grab. And so when I click the button for grab, that's going to bring this map data into SketchUp. And so the reason that we used the location data instead of using Placemaker to bring this in is because we want to be able to use the terrain. And so you can see how by clicking on this, I can actually turn the terrain on and off. And so I'm going to click on this button to turn terrain on. And so that's got me kind of my basic map data that we're now going to use with Placemaker in order to start building our city. And so now that we have our terrain brought in, we're just going to click on the button for Placemaker Dialog. And um, there's two ways you could do this. You could either click on the button for Make Place, which would import everything, or you can click on each one of these individually. So in this case, I'm going to kind of walk through these individually and just kind of talk about what they're doing. So to start off, we're going to select the map data that we've brought in by clicking on it. And then we're going to click the little arrow right here, and we're going to bring in our roads. And you can see how right now the roads are all set up with their widths and everything else, but what I want to do is I want to check the box for merge with surface and the reason that I want to check the box for merge with surface and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button to start this going when you click merge with surface what this will do is this will actually create your roads and this will merge them with the 3d terrain data that you brought in so what this allows you to do is this allows you to take a city like this and actually create it on terrain and so we're gonna wait for a minute and let this go through and add our roads and then we'll take a look at what it creates okay and so when you bring this in, let's take a look at what this does, because what this does is this actually does um, something kind of interesting. What it does is if you look at the top of your page when you bring these roads in and you click on the button for placemaker road lines, you can see how what this actually does is this actually brings in roads based on these lines that are brought in. So what this does is this brings in these lines um, based on your map data, um, centered on where these roads are, and then from that, it draws a road based on where those lines are located. And so you can see how you can switch back and forth between those different options um, just by um, by clicking on these tabs up here so you can see how this is created. And so this brought in all the roads for this city and you can see how they're draped onto the terrain, which is great. That means we're actually creating a 3D city in here. And one thing to note about this when you do this is if you click back and forth between those, um, it may unhide the flat road data that's used to drape this on here. So you may have to come in here and just hide that or turn that back off. But now let's do the same thing where we click on our location and we bring in our paths and we click the button for merge with surface again. All right, and so as you can see, this did the same thing with the paths where it brought them in and it draped them along. It brought them in and it draped them along the terrain. 
So I've hiked this mountain before, and you can see how this path going up to the top of the mountain got draped up here as well. So again, really easy. Um, same thing where it brings in the path lines, and then it creates the paths based on that. And we may mess around with that in a little bit, but let's go ahead and bring in the rest of our data. So one of, one of the cool new features that they brought in as a part of this is the ability to bring in the USA buildings. And so I believe the USA buildings are now coming from like a Microsoft repository or something like that, which means there are a lot more buildings than were in here before. And so we're just gonna do the same thing, but in this case, we need to make sure that we check the box for drop onto surface for our buildings, because what this is gonna do is this is gonna go through and it's gonna add those buildings based on this surface. So when I click on this, it'll start bringing those buildings in. And this process actually goes really quickly. And so you can see how this actually brings in all the houses and everything else. So it's actually pretty amazing um, how quickly all of this gets brought in. And so now we've got all of our buildings brought in. We've got our roads. I'm going to do the same thing real quick for the water and the trees. There shouldn't be a whole lot of those, so those shouldn't take very, full, very long. Just remember, again, when you're working with terrain, to check the box for drop onto surface. And so you can see how when we clicked on the trees, we didn't really get a whole lot in here. And uh, depending on the size of the area, that kind of that's kind of what drives um, how many trees you actually get in here. Um, so in this case, this area doesn't seem to have a whole lot of tree data. Um, you can see how it does bring in a couple. So what we've done is we've, we've gone ahead and we've created our place using Placemaker. I find this to be a really good building block or a place to start for working with our city. And so what I want to do, I like having all those context models in here, um, but what I want to do is I want to start adding a little bit of detail. And so the first thing I want to do when I add a little bit of detail, and I'm not 100% sure if this actually works on the terrain or not, so we'll just kind of see what we can do here, um, is I'm going to start off by turning off the buildings and the roads, And we're going to see if we can bring in some imagery for these areas. And I'm not 100% sure if this works or not, to be honest with you. Um, I know it works with the flat data. I'm not 100% sure if it works with the other data. So we're going to click on this. We're going to go into imagery. And remember, you have a limited number of the digital globe tiles that you can use in order to add better imagery in here. And you can buy more you can see how you get a certain number of tiles um, every subscription um, time frame. And so you can see how what I was able to do with this is I was able to bring in this uh, map data for these squares that's much more high resolution than the data that we had in here before. And so we could bring in that data and we can try bringing in the near map data as well. If you remember the near map data is the ultra high resolution stuff. You wanna be a little bit careful when you do this, um, but the ultra high resolution stuff, that also has a limited number of credits. But if I try to bring this in, it's going to use some of my tile credits from my near map credits. But what that's going to do is that's going to bring in an even higher resolution image. And so you can see how the higher resolution image looks really good. It's just a really detailed image. You can see how you can actually see really well. This is probably the best way to get high resolution image tiles into SketchUp. Just remember that that has a limited number of um, credits available and you may have to buy more. And the other thing you need to be a little bit careful about is this can also increase your file size. So you don't really want to bring in the near map data for like everything in here. Um, just because your file size is going to start getting really big because these are higher resolution images. So that gives us a really good building block for what we can do in the future in this city. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you interested in seeing me continue this further? I mean, this could 
there's a lot of different directions this could go. I mean, I'm in downtown Castle Rock a bunch, so we could even get into like photo modeling a building and uh, adding things like trees and stuff like that. But I'm interested to see if that's something you guys want to see or not. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.